Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's June 12, 2014. I'm David Knight, and here are our top stories. Tonight, exclusive footage reveals how illegal immigrants receive better care than some veterans. Then, revealed the secrets behind the Lord of the Rings. And a new report shows how Irish children have been vaccine guinea pigs. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. What the hell have we become? We just offer our children up to the system with the fluoride and the water and the GMR. Well, our top story today is, of course, the flood of illegal alien children in the United States. Now, InfoWars reporters went to one of the bases where the children are being kept. That was down in San Antonio. Kit Daniels and Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs went down there to film what's going on. Now, at that base, there are 2,000 minors who are being housed at a cost of approximately $250 per child per day. Work that out. That's about a half a million dollars per day just at that one site. Of course, this is a Cloward and Piven strategy, as Alex has pointed out many times, a strategy to take down the United States with uncontrolled welfare state. And of course, if you've got open borders and a welfare state, it's an easy way to take down the United States economy very quickly. And that's exactly what's going to happen. But there's also another aspect of it. This is Obama's dream children, and he's acting as a Pied Piper to bring in a large army of children who are going to grow up knowing the government as their only family. That's been the strategy of tyrants since the days of Plato's Republic. Get the children at an, as early an age as possible. Keep them isolated from their family, from their family's culture, from their family's religion. Let them see the state as their savior, as their parents. And that's exactly what's going to happen now at this access at this facility, of course, they were not given access to any information officers. They were told that it was not media day. And of course, on media day, you are allowed to listen to, but not film, a statement made to the press by the government. How's that for a free and open society? Now, one of the things that Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs pointed out, though, is that one of the most interesting things about this as he said, is that we have illegal immigrants staying here on a military facility while homeless vets are outside the gate with no shelter, no food. And of course, as I mentioned, this is a strategy to take down the economy, a Cloward and Piven strategy. And a quote from one of the former Border Patrol's officers, this is the National Association of Bo Former Border Patrol Officers, a press release from them. They said, this is not a humanitarian crisis. It is predictable orchestrated and a contrived assault on the compassionate side of Americans by her political leaders that knowingly put minor illegal alien children at risk for purely political purposes. And of course, you have to imagine what the risk is to these minor children. Some of them as young as five years old, coming to America, being abandoned by their parents. Evidently, their parents believe that they're going to be able to use them as anchor children to come back in. But it's just an amazing example of child abuse to abandon their children to the state. You can see that full report from Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs and Kit Daniels at Infowars.com. Now today on the Alex Jones radio show, Alex talked to a J.R.R. Tolkien expert, John Bartolo, about a recently revealed recording never before heard going back to the 1960s of J.R.R. Tolkien, a speech that he made. Now, one of the things that he said in this speech I thought was very poignant, essentially J.R.R. Tolkien's speaking about many aspects of the New World Order and about evil in high places. Here's a clip. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from him, and this will, I think this will really appeal to you and your fan base, is his summation of evil in the world, okay? And this is back in 1969. He talks about what he calls the Hydra's heads, and I'll read the quote verbatim from him. He says, the spirit of wickedness in high places is now so powerful and so many-headed in its incarnations, there seems nothing more to do personally than to refuse to worship any of the Hydra's heads. The world, he thought, seemed little better than a new Tower of Babel, all noise and confusion. That's right. Not only the nature of evil, but the nature of evil in high places. And he said it has many heads. We saw many heads of the evil technological surveillance state, the police state at Bilderberg. And it's interesting to me that one of those that was there was Alex Karp, CEO of Palantir Technologies. And Palantir Technologies very consciously channels the J.R.R. Tolkien stories. 
The Palantir, of course, was a device used to look through and communicate at long distances, but it could also look at the people who were using it and look into those people. And of course, that's what Palantir does. It's a data mining company that works for the FBI, the NSA, and of course, the CIA, who funded its initial creation. Now, here's Alex Karp at Bilderberg doing some of his Tai Chi exercises. There was an article last August in Forbes magazine, How a Deviant Philosopher Built Palantir, a CIA-funded data mining juggernaut. And of course, they point out in that article that Palantir's advisors include Condoleezza Rice, former CIA director George Tenet, and General David Petraeus told Forbes that Karp was sheer brilliant. And of course, another Bilderberg attendee this year was Peter Thiel, PayPal billionaire, Facebook billionaire, and he also is the founder, chief investor of Palantir. Now, the ACLU's analyst Jay Stanley says that their software could create a true totalitarian nightmare, monitoring the activities of innocent Americans on a massive scale, to which Alex Karp replies, I didn't create this software so that I could be spied on whenever I smoke a joint or have an affair. No, he created that software so that the NSA could do that to, he presumes, other people. But of course, they've also done it to his pals like David Petraeus. This is exactly what NSA whistleblower Russell Tice told us, one of the earliest of the NSA whistleblowers. This is what the NSA is going to do with its dragnet surveillance. They're going to be able to blackmail the highest politicians the highest Supreme Court judges. It is an Orwellian nightmare, and these guys are writing the software for it. And they see themselves as creating Sauron's tool, the all-seeing eye of Sauron. That's the kind of people that we see that Tolkien warned us about, and they embrace that, but they embrace the evil side of that. Now, news came out today about the Stratfor hack, which involves Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, as well as directly impinges on Barrett Brown. Now, this is confirmation that an FBI informant actually orchestrated the Stratford attack. That was revealed by the DailyDot.com. Now, as they point out, sealed court documents that were obtained by the Daily Dot and Motherboard reveal that the attack on Stratfor was instigated and orchestrated not by Hammond, one of the hackers from WikiLeaks, but by an informant with the full knowledge of the FBI. In addition to directly facilitating the breach, the FBI left Stratfor and its customers, which included defense contractors, police chiefs, the NSA, employees of the NSA, all vulnerable to future attacks and fraud, and it requested knowledge of the data theft to be withheld from the affected customers. This is the FBI doing this, exposing these people to frauds, and asking that it not be revealed. And they say this decision would ultimately allow for millions of dollars in damages. Now, they point out that the FBI's official version of this says that they didn't learn of this until after it happened. In December 6, uh, 2011, after the hackers were already knee-deep in confidential files. However, during his trial, Hammond claimed that the roles were actually reversed. It was Sabu, the FBI informant, who first introduced him to an anonymous hacker. Now, previously, before these leaks, there were no public records to substantiate Hammond's testimony, but now they are. Now, this bears on the Barrett Browning story, and that story is amazing because of what the FBI was trying to do. They were trying to put him away for 50 years simply because he copied a link that was on a public uh, database. He copied that from one place to another public database, so they were going to include him into these hacking charges. Even though he has no knowledge of the hack, he has no computer skills, he's simply a reporter who is using a link. And they tried to get him for 50 years for this. Now, this is a story from Wired Magazine just a couple of months ago, April 3rd, 2014. And what they were reporting on was a secret sealed deal between a plea bargain between Barrett Brown's uh, legal team and the government. Although the exact order was under a court-ordered gag rule, another document filed by the government hinted at the nature of the deal. Now, they say in the document, which supersedes two of Brown's previous three indictments, the government charges Brown with two crimes. Now, listen to the crimes he's charged with. Allegedly assisting the person who hacked Stratfor after the fact and obstructing the execution of a search warrant targeting Brown. So what they were charging him for, what they were trying to put him away for 50 years was ha helping the hacker who attacked Stratfor. But who actually helped the hacker who attacked Stratfor? That was the FBI. As Judge Napolitano has pointed out, 
in 17 cases over 10 years, there were terrorist attacks that were orchestrated, that were planned, that were carried out by the FBI. And at the last minute, they arrested the patsies that they had got to string along with them. Now, in this case, what they're doing is they're arresting a reporter who published a link. And this is what they said. They said that he worked to create confusion about the hacker's identity in a manner that diverted attention away from the hacker. Again, it was the FBI who was doing that. <laughs> the FBI did everything that they're trying to put Barrett Brown away for. And of course, this comes out two months after he's presumably reached a plea bargain deal with him. Now, Aaron Schwartz warned us about this quite some time ago. Of course, he died a little over a year ago. I believe he was suicided by the government, but he warned us that the government, in order to get CISPA through, in order to essentially kill the internet and the freedom of the internet, they were creating cyber threats. This is what he had to say. I think it's really important that we stop cyber attacks. And the way to do that is to make our cyber systems more secure, to close the vulnerabilities that allow attackers to get in. But the problem is the government's doing the opposite. They are funding the creation of vulnerabilities. They are offering rewards for people to find and build vulnerabilities into the system and give it to the U.S. government so then the U.S. government can launch cyber attacks in other countries. So as Aaron Schwartz is pointing out, the government funds vulnerabilities on the Internet. They create them. They run them. They exploit them. And after they create this problem, this cyber security false flag, then they come to us with a solution. And of course, that solution would allow them to shut down anyone's website without any due process. That's called CISPA. Also, SOPA, ACTA, PIPA. He fought very hard against that. I believe that he was not somebody who just gave up in despair and committed suicide. Now, of course, this month's InfoWars magazine talks about the death of the Internet and exactly how they're going to take it down. That's just one of the fronts on which they're attacking the Internet. Of course, the FCC, net neutrality, the Comcast merger, those are all things to be concerned about as well. Now, last week there was a story that broke out of Ireland that was very disturbing. They talked about 800 dead babies over a 36-year period in a, an orphanage where pregnant women would go from the 1930s to the 1960s. It turns out that that story was not exactly true. There were, eight, there were 800 children who died, but they were not necessarily put into a mass grave and a septic tank, as was originally reported. However, they were dying at the rate of about 22 children on average per year when there were only about 200 children in that orphanage. So that's about 10% of the children that were there. Now this week, we have more information about not only that orphanage, but many others in Ireland and the UK where children were experimented on in vaccine tests. Now this is, uh, right now what's breaking is that 298 children were experimented on in drug trials. Campaigners say claims that their parents' consent were sought is not credible. Now, an Irish radio station, News Talk, has now claimed in an exclusive report that 80 children in a care home became ill after they were given an experimental bovine vaccine. They were given a vaccine intended for cattle in trials at five care homes and orphanages in Dublin in the mid-70s. Now, that's 298 children. Now, of course, RT points out that thousands of Irish orphans were used as drug guinea pigs by Burroughs Welcome in the 1970s. They said over 2,000 care home kids were secretly vaccinated against diphtheria in the 1930s in medical trials undertaken by international drugs giant Burroughs Welcome. They talked to one kid who was uh, vaccinated there. His name now is just reported as Christy. He was a child at the time. He says, I remember speaking to my mom and I asked her, why do I have so many marks on my body? She said, I don't know. When you arrived, your arms were sore and bandaged. He had eight vaccine marks on his arms and two on his legs. He said, most people from my generation have one, maybe two. That's it. Not as many as me. So he arrived with bandages all over his arms and legs from the many vaccines that he was given. Now, as this is surfacing, we have a nun who was mother superior at this orphanage saying that, of course, Nothing, none of this happened without parental consent. Parental consent from the mothers who are no longer at the site. And that is not held as credible information from people who.